Today, AMD just obliterated both Intel and Nvidia. Memory prices are about to affect full PCs now. Nvidia is working on a new monster GPU, and Ryzen 10,000 X3D is the biggest upgrade to X3D since first gen. But Intel's own version just leaked as well. This is huge. Welcome everyone to GamerMel. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. First up for today, AMD is completely crushing Nvidia and Intel right now. At least if we look at one of Germany's biggest PC hardware retailers, MindFactory.de, because they're one of the few retailers that actually publish their sales numbers. Regardless, it's really good for AMD. So starting things off, let's talk CPUs. Here we're looking at last week's sales, and you can see that the 9800 X3D and 7800 X3D are by for the best selling chips. I mean, it's not even close. But in fact, if we go down, rise and rise, 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 oh, Intel's first chip on the list is way down here and it only sold 20. In fact, if we look at Tech Epiphany, who went over these numbers, according to this, AMD sold a whopping 91.13% whenever it comes to units sold, while Intel's units just sold 8.87%. And it actually gets even worse when we look at revenue with AMD at 92.85% and Intel at 7.15%. So yeah, like I said, AMD crushing it here, but... Then when we look at GPU sales, we can see something somewhat similar. This one is really wild. So the 9070 XT, as you can see, sold a whopping 925 units. The second best selling one is the 9060 XT, which sold 515. And now we have the 5070 Ti, which sold 390. At first glance, when you actually look at all of these, it's not as bad as AMD versus Intel, but so we can see whenever it comes to units sold, AMD sold a whopping 59.88 percent, while in Nvidia sold 38%. Not amazing for Nvidia. I mean, not absolutely mind-numbingly terrible for Nvidia, but still pretty bad. But things look a little bit better for Nvidia when it comes to revenue, with AMD making up 50.61 and Nvidia making up 48.81. But obviously, Nvidia has much more expensive GPUs. In fact, Nvidia has quite a bit more GPUs, and this is where things get pretty interesting because if we go back here, you can actually see that the 9070 XT alone sold more units than all of Nvidia's RTX 50 series combined. So the total numbers overall may not look all that bad for Nvidia, but given the fact that AMD has far fewer GPUs across the product stack, that is actually pretty bad when you think about it. I do want to point out that this is only one retailer, and I believe Mind Factory tends to sell more AMD in the past, at least when it comes to CPUs, but this is still a stark difference here. Plus, we can see that AMD's 9070 XT is the number one selling GPU on both Amazon as well as Newegg. Definitely looks like a trend. And next up, things are getting even worse. But first, it's been a while since I found the perfect office chair. So I've had even more time to really test it out as a daily driver. And it's still one of the best chairs out there. I'm of course talking about FlexiSpot C7 Max, which is just about every feature you could want in an ergonomic chair. Starting with that ergonomic part, the C7 Max has an automatic lumbar support. So it perfectly aligns with everyone's back for serious comfort. It also has armrests that move in basically every direction so you can adjust them exactly how you want, plus a headrest that moves in every way. You probably noticed that I'm a pretty big guy, which is why I love the fact that it has a wide profile, so I don't feel like I'm squeezing into my chair. But probably one of my favorite things is that unlike other ergonomic chairs, the reclining is actually stiff, so I can keep it open to recline anytime I want. And let's be honest, it's one of the nicest looking chairs out there. And this is the best time to buy because FlexiSpot's having their massive Black Friday event right now. Just visit my link in the description to get yours today. Day.
Now, back to the story. It looks like memory prices are actually getting so bad, they're beginning to affect full-on gaming PCs. This story originally comes from a new tweet by Cyberpower PC, where they claim that RAM prices have surged by a whopping 5 100% and SSD prices have now risen by 100% and obviously that has an impact on building gaming PCs and because of that CyberPower PC will begin price adjustments on all systems starting December 7th. So yeah that's before Christmas before all the holidays are over which means this is clearly having a big impact on things which obviously isn't a big surprise according to this this has actually had a direct impact on the cost of building gaming PCs since October 1st of this year. So they've clearly been eating that cost. But obviously, with these kinds of price increases, you can only do that for so long. Now, I will say that it's really easy to try and get mad at CyberPower PC, but I honestly wouldn't blame them. This is purely supply and demand. AI buildouts are sucking up supply like there's no tomorrow, and RAM makers are hesitant to up production because no one really knows how long this AI boom will last, and ramping up takes a ton of time and money and could destroy prices if everything crashes overnight. So at least for the time being, prices will likely continue to rise. And next up, NVIDIA is apparently working on a new monster of a GPU. This story originally comes from a new Geekbench benchmark that was spotted, and when we look down here, you can see that it comes with an RTX 6000 D. And given that D moniker, we would assume that this is a new China-only GPU. But it's one really interesting card, because as you can see right here, it comes with 19,968 CUDA cores, which is actually less than the 5090. But instead of 32 gigabytes of GDDR7, this bad boy comes with a whopping 84 gigabytes, and it's ECC. So even though it doesn't say RTX Pro 6000D, it's almost certainly a pro model, and it looks a essentially like a cut down RTX Pro 6000. Definitely for workloads that need a ton of memory. I still really want to try gaming on one of these. Obviously the drivers aren't going to be as good, but imagine what kind of texture mods I could put on Skyrim. And lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen 10,000 X3D chips are looking to be the biggest upgrade since first gen X3D. But get this, we also have Intel's competitor to X3D. So starting things off, this first comes from a tweet by this leaker right here. And I'll come back to what he says in a minute, but this spawns off a tweet by the very well-known leaker HXL. This is someone who's definitely gotten a ton of things right in the past, and as as you can see, he claims that Zen 6 X3D comes with 48 megabytes of L3 cache on the die, and then from the 3D stat cache, there's a whopping 96 megabytes of L3 cache for a grand total of 144 megabytes. And this is a massive boost over every X3D chip in the past, because starting with the 5000 X3D up until the 9000 X3D chips, AMD had 32 megabytes on the die and 60 4 megabytes of X3D cache. So this is a whopping 48 megabytes more total L3 cache. Now, you might be thinking about the 9950 X3D because it has 128 megabytes of L3 cache, and that's because it has a second CCD with 32 megabytes. But when you're gaming, it more or less turns off those cores, so you effectively only have 96 again. And you might be thinking about the leaked X3D2 chip, but that's more L3 cache because they have two separate chiplets with 3D vCache. And on that, I'd assume they won't turn those cores off, but having more on one chiplet will definitely be better, if this does end up being right. And this brings us to the next leaker who claims that Intel's BLLC, which stands for Big Last Level Cache, think of it as Intel's response to 3D vCache. Also, keep in mind that we're not talking about Intel's refreshed Arrow Lake coming up, but their real follow-up to that. And first, according to this leaker, it will only be present on Intel's 
unlocked K SKUs. And I'll honestly say that this is really interesting because it would be a huge new reason to get the unlocked SKU over the non K SKU, though I'd assume that this will make them much more expensive. Remember that AMD has an unlocked multiplier for overclocking on all of their Ryzen CPUs, while Intel only allows it for their K lineup. Either way, he also gives us the actual L3 cache amount. According to him, it comes with a whopping 144 megabytes of L3 cache, which is exactly the amount of cache set to be in AMD's 10,000 X3D. So this is going to be very interesting. I'm not sure if this will help Intel's chips the same way it does AMD, but if that's the case, Intel may finally challenge AMD in gaming, especially as leaks claim a huge core increase with Intel chips. Though, of course, AMD's next gen is also expected to get a core increase as well, plus we're talking upwards of 7 gigahertz. All in all, things are set to be way more interesting for these two giants moving forward. So while that does it for today, who do you think will come out on top, Intel or AMD? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out FlexiSpot's C7 Max down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.